Now at 11. A treasured local sports historian has died. We'll take a look back at the life, legacy, and accolades of Guy Valvano. And... A beloved local sports historian, sports newspaper legend, and first ever sports information director at Lackawanna College has died. Lackawanna College released a statement today saying Guy Valvano passed away Tuesday. He spent more than four decades writing and covering local sports in NEPA. In 1992, he became the first sports information director at what was then Lackawanna Junior College. He was 96 years old. Chief Meteorologist Josh Hodell joins us now with the forecast. One of the nice things uh, in my early days when I start seeing some of uh, uh, sons of friends of mine uh, become athletes in high school and, and star in high school and, and, and especially some of my neighbors, you know, it was, uh, it was a great thing for me then. Guy Valvano was fresh out of high school when he started as a copy boy for the Scranton Tribune in 1946. And when the late Chick Feldman brought him into his sports department three years later, Guy never expected his career to span parts of six decades. I enjoyed the work very much, so I figured uh, I'd probably uh, wind up sitting behind a typewriter for years and years. And, you know, in, in Chick Feldman's case, he was our sports editor. People used to ask me uh, over the years, when is he going to retire? When is he going to retire? And my response was, uh, Chick is going to die behind a typewriter. And, you know, uh, not to say it was prophetic, but here it happened at Madison Square Garden. He was sitting at ringside punching out a story in a fight involving Tommy Hicks. While he's met and written about hundreds of national sports figures, most of Guy's career has been spent writing about local athletes, particularly those in high school. And over the years, he's seen the effect increased media coverage has had on the kids. It's brought kids uh, closer together. I notice in, on the high school scene, uh, there are kids from one school, like kids from Dunmore would know the, the players from Valley View and. Uh, from Riverside in those areas, and they're all good friends. On November 14th at Janetti's in Dixon City, a testimonial dinner will be held in honor of Guy Valvano. It's a fitting tribute to a man who has, through his words and his actions, given a lifetime of service to the local sports scene. Sid Michaels, Eyewitness Sports. Presented to Guy Valvano in appreciation for your many years of service to the public, to sport fans of all ages. Best wishes from my car council president, Joseph Don McMayer.
How was that for brevity, ladies and gentlemen? Congratulations, Guy Valvano. We're very proud of you. This is presented to Guy Valvano for outstanding service and contribution to the interscholastic programs of the member schools in District 2 PIAA, November the 17th, 1991. Thank you, Governor. You'll always be remembered by the Northeast Athletic Conference. Congratulations, Guy. And Guy, congratulations to you and Marie, and the best of luck in your retirement. Guy, the U-Haul truck is on the way for him. <laughs> He just mentioned to me about all those plaques and everything. Personally, he would appreciate it if uh, he would much rather a mortgage payment or a payment. <laughs> yeah, you know, here's a man that wrote good things about good people, and, uh, and this is the testimony. I know I run banquets too, ladies and gentlemen. To get 200 people out is a task. But what a tribute to this man here to have a crowd like this here. Let's hear it for Guy Valvano. To Guy Valvano, Brooks, best wishes, Brooks Robinson. Congratulations, Kyle. And good luck in the rest of your life. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, look this way. And if I could sum it up very simply, in one phrase, Guy, from all of us here this evening, thank you for being a friend. Thank you very much. Our friend, Mr. Guy Valvano. Vince said it would be like this, but I never believed him. <laughs> I know my grandchildren have a word to describe this perfectly. Awesome. <laughs> you, met the, you met four of them tonight. There are five. The only one missing is Corey. Today is his third birthday. He was a little too young to be here tonight. I'm sure Yogi Berra wouldn't mind if I borrowed one of his classic lines by saying that I want to thank everyone who made this night necessary. <laughs> Shortly after I began writing for the Tribune and the Scrantonian, there were rumors circulating that I was partial to Dunmore. Those rumors continued to circulate down through the years. Well, tonight I want to clear the air and set the record straight once and for all by telling you that all those rumors were true. <laughs> I read the other day where Joe Flannery gave me credit for breaking him in as a newspaper man. Don't you believe him? Joe is at least 15 years older than I am. <laughs> it's nice to be on the same dais with Gaynor Cawley, the best politician money can buy. <laughs> Gaynor has been in such great demand as a Toastmaster, after dinner speaker and humorist, that for the last year he's been moonlighting as a state representative. <laughs> Some call Gaynor the General Motors of Toastmastering. And then there are those who say he has done for the Toastmastering profession what Three Mile Island did for nuclear energy. <laughs> and Canio, flattery will hit you everywhere, but not tonight. As a bas basketball coach, Canio is an eloquent speaker. In 1981, when Canio won his second championship in three years at Dunmore High School, he immediately became a legend in his own mind. <laughs> and here's something Canio never told his mother. Before he came to Dunmore to coach, he was a coach at an out-of-state college. And after 
His uh, run and shoot offense didn't take with the fans there and they lost three or four games in a row. He began getting uh, nasty phone calls. One night one of the calls came through and the person uh, said to him, there's a, tra a train leaving town tomorrow morning at six o'clock. Make sure you're under it. <laughs> and how about Frank Kazwara? The funniest guy that come down the pike since Chick Mara. <laughs> Frank is the poor man's father, Guido, as you found out tonight. I understand our plans in the works to do a movie on Frank, and Father Guido is going to play the starring role. <laughs> tonight I find myself trying to find the proper words to express my gratitude to all the wonderful people who have been so kind and courteous to me down through the years. There are so many to thank that it would be impossible for me to do so tonight. But I'm especially grateful to my wife of 38 years. Please give her a little round of applause. <laughs> also to my three daughters, my son, my daughter-in-law, my son-in-law, my parents, sister and brothers, aunts, uncles, and grandparents, and everyone else who's been so, so supportive to me over the years. My thanks also go out to the great people who are my mentors at the Scrantonian and the Tribune, and to the educators, particularly the coaches, athletic directors, and officials who included me among their friends. I can never forget the, mem the members of the committee who arranged this beautiful affair and all the others who participated. I thank all of you for your presence here tonight. You have generated enough warmth to last me, not only for the upcoming winter, but for many winters to come. Thank you and God bless you. I'm so glad that you're my grandfather because you're famous now. And that I, I hope two years to come that you get to write again. And here's Marissa. Congratulations, Pop. We love you. Happy days of my life. Thank God I'm here. And God bless my son. God bless you.